The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host, a jelly donut, David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you. And I care. Barry Stein. I'm going to use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, February 9th, 2019. Let's go back in time. What did cigars cost in 1994? Who were the leaders and how much have things changed today? And what are underpriced cigars? Welcome, everybody, to this edition of The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. So today we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back in time 25 years ago. It's hard to believe for me. Um, 25 years ago was 1994. What was I doing 25 years ago today? I was selling cigars, and it was the height of the cigar boom. Uh, Cigars were booming. Uh, everybody knew it at that point. Cigars, as I uh, used to say, is hot and in fashion. Um, is news, that what you used to say used 25 to, years I ago? I did. I have um, people would walk commercials in. and everything. Should uh, I be cigars smoking are hot cigars? and in fashion? They're hot and in fashion. <laughs> um, they were. There were cigar dinners and there was uh, cigar events and cigar stores were opening up a mile a minute and. Um, Every kind of cigar brand was coming out. Everybody who, anybody who had any money was saying, I'm going to get into the cigar business and start a cigar brand. And they had to figure out what name to call their cigar brand. And it was Don Nobody was the word that was out there. It could be Don Anybody because Don was um, just a word that would, uh, I guess, pay respects to that person. Yeah, it's like Don. calling someone Sir. Yeah, Don Culleone, right, of the godfather that Barry understands completely. Yeah, Jonathan has no clue what we're talking about (laughs) right right now. You feel proud of yourself that you're part of this elite club of people who have seen this stupid movie? Yeah, and that's why I'm proud, because you think it was stupid. Right, and you don't know. that. All movies are stupid. No, not that one. It's historic. (laughs) Well, this is Don Pepe, P-E-P-E, and... um, Believe it or not, it, it comes out in 1994, 25 years ago, and I don't know how long it lasted, and I don't know why I saved it. But for some reason, this has been in my personal collection for 25 years, and I always look at it and say, why did I save it? I have no idea why, and what I'd like to do is burn through them today so I can have this space back after 25 years. Um, and it's a cabinet of 25 cigars. It is a all-Brazilian cigar. I'm going to open the box now, and it says in here, the Don Pepe cigars are made of the finest and most pure Brazilian tobacco. This is a Brazilian Puro, all Brazilian. You don't see a lot of that out there. Well, because some Brazilian tobacco is not all that pure. No, because it mixes with other Pours tobaccos. around, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's tradition produced... Uh, production process is done by skillful hands, guaranteeing a ve- very special quality and pleasurable among connoisseurs. For a better use, keep them at a temperature of 17% Celsius and a moisture of 70%. 17% Celsius, and Barry's uh, rolling on that to see where it is. I'm going to open up the box now and give it a smell. They're wrinkly as can be. That would be 62.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, 62.6, which is a favorite number amongst all of us. Ed Sullivan, you know how when we get a new podcaster and they forget that they have a microphone in right. front of them? Yeah, yeah. So and they, what? Hit, I put- they hit the microphone the one time yeah. and then they don't hit it again. 
Well, Dave hits his microphone every damn week. Because it's 1994 right now. <laughs> we went back in time, I told you. I didn't know how to do it in 1994. There, there were no podcasts. Ed, please take take that smell the box and then pass, uh, pass it out. Try not to smash the microphone with the box if you can help it. Pass it out to the audience so everybody can smoke this along with us. This cigar is from 25 <coughs> years ago. Uh, that doesn't mean, oh, it's good. Uh, I don't know why I saved it for what Very, reason. very, very cedary on the yeah. foot. Sitting in that box in my humidor for 25 years. Why? The band is loose as can be. Yeah. So, so the cigar has shrunk. There's also a minty quality to it, like almost like a menthol. Well, maybe it was stored in close proximity to Dave's secret stash of menthol cigarettes. All right. So Sir Dick Don Pepe Robusto from 1994. Barry, what do you know about this? Well, it features, it's a, we're going to smoke a Robusto, uh, and it features a Brazilian Sumatra wrapper with a non-disclosed Brazilian binder, and the fillers are Brazilian Mate Norte and Mate Fina. And that's all we know. Okay. Uh, this was available in seven sizes, um, and it's supposed to be a medium to full-bodied cigar, rich and earthy, according to their... 1994's version correct. of full-bodied. Which, if it tasted like anything, they could call it full-bodied back then. And I guess it was a big deal because it was a Brazilian Puro. All Brazilian. Uh, I, I, you don't see a lot of all Brazilian cigars out there. I'll give you about a Brazilian reasons why you yeah, wouldn't I, want to make a cigar with all you, Brazilian tobacco. You think it was uh, by choice or necessity just because it wasn't enough tobacco? That's where the days, tobacco was. Yep, in those days that you did what you did, but... Uh, Mata Forte and, and Mata Fina, Mata Norte and Mata Fina, very popular. Sumatra, Brazilian Sumatra, which is the real Brazilian stuff, because that's where uh, Sumatra is. Uh, all popular tobaccos, but all together, I don't know. We're going to see, and let's see right now. So um, what do I have here? It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all of the brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. This is going to be the worst pre-light description ever. But if anybody's ever had a fish tank. <laughs> oh, God. And they open up that the flake food and the aroma from the flake food is what the cold jar tastes like. He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> I got a yeah, strong. So I got weird. a. I got a strong cedar here. There's a lot of cedar. There's a lot of cedar. So imagine they they had uh, seven sizes of this, and um, again in those days you sold whatever you could get. So they sold every single one of them sold except, except one box. One box. One box. And what? What did twenty five year old younger Dave? Why did he decide of all the brands that I had? Let me save this box. For what reason? And you don't remember the no brands? No idea. Nothing. Nope. Nope. I'm going to put in a little bit of musical perspective. 25 years ago, I think next month, Green Day's Dookie came out. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> well, Dookie is... Never mind. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone 2 featuring three jets. Uh, this one, you got to flip the top manually, but you do get an easy striker. You've got an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, a see-through tank so you know exactly how much fuel you have in your patented Vertigo big-ass tank. And the best part about this lighter is the double wall protection. Mm. No matter how long that thing stays lit, you can leave your hands right on the flame, almost on the flame, yeah, on and the not wall, catch yourself on fire. That's the Vertigo Cyclone 2 for $14.99. Well, the aroma smells good from your cigar. Yep, it does. Started off with like a, a burst of flavor, but then it became almost instantly earthy. I got plenty of cedar from the aroma of it and everything. And, and a lot of that is sitting in that cedar box with that cedar uh, sheet across the top of it, block of cedar wood inside. You know the, the thing of... Um Ba bathroom soaps that have the shells. There's the shell one, and then yeah, there's the my, mermaid. My grandmother used to have those. Yeah, yes. yeah. You ever eaten one of those? No. That's the first. That's the initial light. Is just. I used to get my mouth washed out with soap all the time. Look at this. Yeah, it was. Ivory that was what for my me. grandmother would use. See the sheet. I remember this back in the day. See the sheet in between each layer. 
That explains all the cedar on the cigar. Yeah, so in between each layer. Uh, cigars were selling so quickly at that time, they were probably trying to get some cedar because they wouldn't sit around for a long period of time. But before the show, you were saying, does this have anything to do with Bahia? Because Bahia was Costa Rican, not Brazil. But they did have a Brazil, um, a line of Brazil, right? Yeah, when I was trying to find a picture of this for our, for our show graphic, yeah. um, all I was able to find was the Sir Dick Bahia, which was a red and gold band. It's just a fun name to yeah. say. Yeah, hey, sure before did. there was Mr. Jonathan, there was Sir Dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so funny because it's true. <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> since we're talking about this cigar and how old it is, can, do you mind if I uh, read an email that has to do with old cigars? Go ahead. So Nicholas writes, Hey, Dave, Barry, the detestable Mr. Jonathan, and the other guy who doesn't get his face on camera. Yesterday... The no good, rat bastard, may they burn in hell, scumbag New England Patriots won the Super Bowl. That's right. After the game, word got out that the team owner, Bob Kraft, gave the team 50-year-old Padron cigars as a gift. Yeah. Later on, it was reported that they may be 50th anniversary cigars. Assuming they are actually 50 years old, is this a good gift or the equivalent of flat champagne? I hit up my cigar contact, which is Google. And the consensus is that aging cigars makes them milder, and that's about it. So how is that a good gift? So basically, I have four questions. Can you confirm if they are 50 years old no. or just an anniversary cigar? Anniversary cigar. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good of a gift is this? Great gift. Great. Yep. Since Dave seems to be a cranky, unimaginative guy, I think it's safe to assume he gives, his, he gives cigars or cigar-related gifts for every occasion, including Valentine's Day. What is the best cigar-related gift? He's ever given or gotten. No, I don't. I'm not that guy that gives away, give Valentine gifts for boxes of cigars or anything. And but can that is a great gift. And as a matter of fact, the humidor that they put, they put New England Patriot on it. It's the humidor of the Padron 50th. It was Nelson Alfonso, Alfonso. that created that. Uh, if you remember our producer before, Ed Sullivan, Chuck Morrison. Chuck Morrison made this thing happen, by the way. So there is a, a Cigar Authority connection with exactly what happened. Two years ago, um, George Padron called and said, how can I get some boxes of cigars to the New England Patriots? And I said, I've done it before. You just got to get lucky if it ends up being on TV or whatever. Because they did Garofalo cigars one year. Right. And, uh, just didn't get on TV. So he said, how could I do it? And I said, well, let me hook you up with Chuck and see what he can do. And Chuck says, yes, send them to me, and I'll get them in, in there for sure. And he got them in there for sure, and he got some uh, TV attention two yeah. years ago. Uh, last year they didn't win. I don't know what was sent. And this year the box of cigars, and he was telling me that he, they're going to make one with the, the top of it. It's going to say New England Patriots on it. Uh, and send it to him. They, they, actually, two years ago, they did. He held on to it. That was the one from, from last yep. year. He sent it to him. They didn't end up winning. They didn't end up smoking. You know, he didn't know if, it was, if they gave him out anyway or not. Turns out they didn't. And then there he showed up. And, and you're talking about Mr. Kraft, plenty of money, right? He was giddy. He was spending more time about those cigars than anything else. He was so excited to end up having them. No, they're not 50-year-old cigars, but they are the Padron 50. They're about $40 per cigar. They were yeah. $6,000 a box in the, in the humidor, right? $6,000? bucks. 5400 Yeah. For the 50 cigars and the humidor. Okay, so you're talking a little over $100 a piece. Um, $106 a piece, as I recall. On the first round, oh, yeah. and uh, great gift. Yep, and the first one to get it was Julian Edelman, and without missing a beat, he said, "Who has a cutter?" So he was familiar enough with cigars to knew what he knew what to do. Yeah, cool. and I heard Tom Brady uh, refused to have one. Really? Yeah. Well, he passed. Okay. Sometimes when you're the goat. Uh, final question: Can Dave make Ed, whatever his name is, send me fifteen hundred dollars so I can buy a really nice watch? Signed, Nicholas. No. No. And the other point is, how nice a watch is it going to be for 1500 bucks? Yeah. The yeah. guy has no imagination. No. <laughs> no. He thinks I'm passing out cigars for Valentine's Day and right. Nicholas. Well. What? I give my wife a different type of stick. Yeah. 
He's, he's saying you have no imagination, but all he can imagine is a fifteen hundred dollar watch. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know either, Nicholas. Even your everyday beater is more than that. Speaking it of the is. Super Bowl, uh, we did have predictions. Barry said forty-two to seventeen. <laughs> Dave said twenty-four to twenty. Ed Sullivan said thirty-seven to thirty-one, and Mister Jonathan said thirteen to three. Pretty close. The man who knows the least about That's sports. That's what happens all the time. Mr. Jonathan, 13th. Thir they call me Mr. Nailed It. Um, all right, so let's go back in time. What was hot, what was not, uh, what was going on. Um, cigars were hot, no doubt about it. Um, what happened in 1994, uh, the president was Bill Clinton, and he kind of made uh, cigars hot. Uh, these were $2. Two dollar cigars. Um, Bill Clinton was the president. Remember the Monica Lewinsky thing with cigars and the yeah, whole bit. All you right? had to do was say Bill Clinton. We we knew exactly okay. where you were going with that. Uh, Tanya Harding wins the national figure skating championship, but the title was stripped away uh, because her rival Nancy Carrigan uh, suddenly was attacked in Detroit, why January sixth. Why, why me? Why me? Why me? And why you? Was because you were better than her, and her ex husband uh, had her. Uh, Knees hit, and uh, they denied involvement. We know how that story. They they made a movie about it, right? Who was it? Jeff Galuli or something like that? Yep. Yeah. Wow, you remember the guy's name? <laughs> so <laughs> friend of Barry's. <laughs> Popular culture, 1994. Lisa Marie Presley marries Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, Kirk Kilbane commits suicide. Popular films in 1994: The Shawshank Redemption. I think Pulp Fiction came out that Pulp year as Fiction well. Pulp Fiction did. Forrest Gump, Dumb and Dumber. So between those four, your favorite movie is there, right? Uh, no. Mine is. Shawshank Redemption, yes. I think you had said. Yep. Somebody said Pulp Forrest. Fiction was Pulp on Fiction. mine. Pulp Fiction, yeah, that was, was on my your list. Forrest Gump? No, oh, I, I hate that you movie. You hated I it? I love that movie. Shawshank was on my list. All right. So that for the first time about five weeks ago, six weeks so ago. So that leaves Dumb and Dumber. And <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine the kind of, kind I of love that movies movie I like. Uh, popular television, Law and Order, Rugrats, Jerry Springer, Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead. We were all about stupid, goofy stuff, right? Frasier. Um, and how much did things cost? Now, this is the interesting thing of what things cost. In those <coughs> days, um, the cost of a new home in 1994, the average ho house cost $119,000. Today, that number is 290000 from 119 to 290000 The difference between those two is it went up 144% housing, okay, 25 years. The average income of a person was $37,000 in 1994, and today it's $62,000. That's an increase of 68%. So the house went up 144%, but your income only went up 68%. The average monthly rent went from 533 to 1230 That's an increase of 131 Gasoline was $1.09, and now it's 250 an increase of 128%. Movie tickets, and that's national averages. Movie tickets uh, went from four dollars and eight cents to ten dollars and fifty cents is the average now. One hundred and fifty-seven percent increase. A new car in nineteen ninety-four, the average new car was twelve thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Today, it's thirty-five thousand dollars, an increase of one hundred and eighty-three percent. A dozen eggs goes from eighty-six cents to two dollars, one hundred and thirty-three percent increase. And the loaf of bread goes from 159 to 250, an increase of 57%. So I took all those averages. It's a 125% average rate increase. More than double. More than double. In 25 years. Yeah. So salaries went up only 68%, and the average of goods went up 125%. So that's what ended up happening there. Now let's look at... Um, Slide number one at Sullivan. So those that are watching on the show uh, can see slide number one. And that is a, uh, I can barely see it, but um, I think I have it here. That is a price list to the retailer. 
This is what I received as my price list in um, January of 1994 from a company called Villazon. By the way, which is perfect, Villazon is the distributor of this brand. So if you looked at the bottom of it, you saw, saw Villazon and company, uh, and they were in uh, Upper Saddle River, New Jersey in 1994. So that's who I bought them from, and that's their price list. Um, they were the makers of Hoya de Monterey and Punch. Uh, that was their big price, big uh, price cigars. That was a price increase that they took that year. Again, the cigar boom is going on, and uh, it's in full swing. Supplies are tight, so you know what happens when supplies are tight. Demand increases, and therefore the price, the price ends up going go up. up. So that's what happened. So here's a Hoya de Monterey Rothschild in slide one. And this punch, punch Rothschild, if you know one or the other, they're actually the same exact product. They told us even then. My cost of a box was, um, I believe, fifty-eight thirteen. Is that what you got there? Fifty-eight dollars and thirteen cents for a box of fifty. So that's a little over a dollar a piece, right? The shipping, uh, they would charge you um, actually cost whatever the cost of shipping was. But if you bought four hundred dollars or more, they prepaid the shop uh, the shipping. So I always did. So fifty eight thirteen for a box of fifty cost me a dollar sixteen per cigar. The suggested retail price on that cigar was a dollar fifty five, but I'll show you in a later slide that I sold them for a dollar forty five. A little little ink decreased. It was a ten cents cheaper to buy them from two guys than it was to buy from the average store to just a suggested retail price. Which gave me a profit of twenty nine cents. Yeah. That's how buddy. much I made, huh? And this is how I made it in life. It's twenty nine <laughs> cents. So back in the day the the profit margin on cigars was similar to the profit margin on a pack of cigarettes. No, cigarettes were very, very very little. Okay. Yeah. We were making a nickel or All whatever. Right. Um but a box of 50, we sold for $60.49, which was a savings of $12.01. Uh, and we, I would make a robust $2.36 on a box of cigars. So you do that 10 times, and what do you got? You got 20 bucks. So that's how we would end up uh, building our empire as this went on and selling cigars like this. Uh, slide number two is going to show you now what ended up happening when you started building your business up. Uh, because it becomes a game of volume at that point, that you want to build your, your volume up so you have savings. Because I bought a lot of cigars. If you bought 2,500 or more of them, that's single cig cigars. Single cigars. So a box Jesus. of 50, you bought 2,500 or more, that's 50 boxes, um, of them, or 100 boxes of 25, if they came in 25s, which most of the guys did, but the Punch Rothschild came in 50s. Um, mix or match, um, you would get an additional discount of 12, 2, and 5. So that the old timers out there that have been in the cigar business for a while understand that number, 12, 2, and 5, because we'd always think about what it comes out to. And you don't add 12 plus 2 is 14, and 5 is 19, and say I get 19% off, because it doesn't work that way. The wholesale was fifty eight thirteen. They're going to give you twelve percent off, which is a discount of six dollars and ninety eight cents, making the cost fifty one dollars and fifteen cents. Now you take another two percent off that total, so it's fifty one fifteen minus two percent is another dollar three, bringing the discount down to or the price of the product down to fifty dollars and twelve cents, and now take an additional five percent off of the new total. $50.12 minus 5% is another $2.51 off, and you're down to $47.61 if you bought that many of that particular right. thing. So that is how it ended up working for how prices go. And because I was buying at those discounts, and I said I want more business so that I continue to buy at these discounts, you want to sell more, you discount the product itself, and you're selling Better, a better price than everybody else's. Maybe you're getting those guys to come in and buy the boxes from you or buy sure. handfuls from you. And that's how the game is played, was played. That's how, how it ends up working. And the, the change-up that ended up happening, the, the good news change-up that happened is as new brands came in, they wanted you to take their brand on. 
And how they would do that is they would give you additional discounts on top of that and say, yeah, but if you buy from us, we're going to give you this extra 10% or whatever's going to end up happening. You say, all right, I'll give this a try. I hope to sell those cigars. Um, you know, and that would be, you know, a brand like this where the manufacturer, which is Surdic, goes to Villazon and says, we want you to distribute our cigar for you. Now we've got Villazon trying to sell us this product, and they may offer us some sort of deal right. in order to end up carrying that. I, again, I have no idea. I wish I took notes. You know, I'm saving this because and wrote something on it, but I look at it and I scratch my head and I say, why did I save this? For what reason? You're smoking it. Why would I save a cigar like this? Well, it tastes, uh, there's a strong note of cedar, Cool Ranch Doritos, and I can't get Barry's They didn't even have Cool Ranch Doritos then. <laughs> Out of my head. Fish food. There's fish food sprinkled in on top yeah, of the yeah. Cool Ranch Doritos. I definitely got the Cool Ranch Doritos. Been aged in cedar. Yeah. Do you like it? It's okay. Uh, I wouldn't be over the moon for it. It's too. It's honestly. It's way, way too mild. Reminds me of Giselle. She's Brazilian. I don't know. <laughs> you make my head hurt. You really do. So uh, what happens today is there is no more free shipping. Uh, most companies don't do it. They actually charge a flat rate shipping <coughs> of 3%. Right. So instead of doing these discounts, as I mentioned to you, they're actually adding the 3% on at the end. And what makes that bad is some retailers that aren't on top of their game don't even realize, you know, they're just looking at, oh, this is what I pay for it, when that isn't really what you pay for it. And when, you, when you're operating on slim numbers like that, 3% major difference that ends up happening. Um, let's look at um, today at a brand like Huy de Monterey. Um, the, did, did I have a, uh, yeah, I said the suggested retail on that price. Did I say it? Um, one fifty-five, and you sold it for one forty-five. Is the suggested retail that you mentioned earlier in the show? So I was paying ninety-five cents at the low price and selling it for one forty-five. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at the discount, I was down to ninety-five cents per cigar at forty-seven dollars, and I was selling it for a dollar five, which left fifty cents profit. Huge, right? Huge. Every two, I get to make a dollar. Um, sell 25 singles of the same, and uh, or a whole box ended up coming out the same. Um, so today, that same exact cigar, 25 years later, the suggested retail price on Hoya de Monterey, which was a dollar 45, is now five dollars and 19 cents, um, and that's the map price. Oh no, but the map price, minimum advertised price to be competitive. So what, what ended up happening is everybody starts discounting, oh, I'm going to take a dime off so I get all the business and I can build my business up and everything. Then the guy down the street says, well, I'm going to take 15 cents off. So he takes 15 cents off, and then I say, oh, I'll take 20 cents off. I'm only making a quarter. I'm down to a nickel here right. or whatever it is. So everybody starts doing this, and then you can't make money. You go out of business, and they say, all right, let's create something called map pricing, minimum advertised price. Therefore, this is as low as you can go. And people cheat on that, too, but it is there. So there becomes a minimum advertised price. On that Hoya de Monterey today, it is $4.38. It's the minimum advertised price, but the suggested retail price is $5.19. But you can go down to four thirty-eight if you want to try to build your business up. But I'll tell you, for brick and mortar, you, you, and this is where the difference happens on online sales. And people look, hey, the guy online is cheaper. You know, he, he went down to $4.38 and the, and the store is charging $5 or $5.19. Um, you know, how come he doesn't get down to $4.38? Rent, heat, taxes, employees, expense. Right. It's not a warehouse. You got to do all the things that go along with it. You got to lounge in there and you got to keep it clean and do all the stuff that goes along with it. So very, very tough. Um, for smaller brands, it's more fair. The bigger brands, it isn't fair. You can't survive. They, they, they're not leaving it to you to be able to make a living and be able to stay in business. 
for the smaller brands, they actually have different models and stuff that make it so that you can survive and make a living and, and uh, you know, do pretty good. So the, the proper way or the, the thing that I have been doing over, over these years is try a product mix that can do both. Right, you need the big name brands in of there, course. and you bring in some of the others, <coughs> and you know you're able to be somewhere in between. So your your margins are somewhere in between. So uh, that's what we do. We'll get more into it with pricing as as we're going on today, but uh, that is uh, what I'm going to show you for how it's priced right now. So uh, that's quite the increase on uh, the cigars. It's greater percentage wise than everything else. I'm going to get to that right after we come back from break and, and explain exactly where we are on retail prices um, of a whole bunch of different brands, what it was then, what it is now, what is the increase, and um, um, how does that match up with uh, what everything else costs us. So we're going to get to that along with uh, more look back of 25 years ago. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper, rich in bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice, and available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum, competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, the Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper, fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. 
take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hey, this is Willie Marante from Miami Cigar. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back. We're back in 1994 right now. We're talking about the changes in prices and cigars that were happening at that time. Uh, We'll see how it turns out. It would be like you getting a box of cigars today and holding it to 2044. That's what I did here. Doesn't it seem like crazy? Yes. Why would you do such a thing? And. So at a $2 stick in 1994, this is relatively expensive. I was paying $127. This was uh, $30. I was just looking this up. $30, $31.88, uh, which is $1.27 per cigar, and we were selling them for 2 bucks. Now, did you get a discount on this one, too, if you bought it in bulk? He doesn't even remember what this one is. Yes, there was, um, there was a discount of um, 12 and 2 if How? I bought it in bulk, not the 5. Gotcha. How do you still have that information? I have the whole price list right here. He's a hoarder. And uh, every page of what it was, and the, and the date on this is January 24th, 1994. And this was the price list that they... Uh, and you just not, have not this? Even, not even folded. So they mailed it to me, or the cigar rep handed it to me, and I shoved it in the thing. And as I was going through papers uh, earlier this year, I saw it, and I said, well, that's a show. 25 years. So the chat room had asked that on, the, on one of the cigars you were telling us about, the Punch and the Hoy de Monterey. Yeah. Based on 50 boxes, you would get a discount. Yes. And that was in 1994. Now you built three big stores, successful online. Yeah. How many boxes do you order now per brand? Well, more than that. I mean, uh, <laughs> you're there when the trailer trucks pull up. Yep. We buy a lot of cigars, a lot. And, you know, obviously when we're trying something new or something, maybe we'd say, okay, give us 10 Go, boxes yeah, per 10 size. Deep per right. size. Um, per and, wrapper. But then once. The, if, if the brand catches on, the sad part. This is the time of year, and we, we just went through it. That we look at um, the bottom, the bottom end. Like everybody yeah. looking at the cigars that sell the best. Sometimes we look every year at this time of year at the bottom. What is not selling the most? Because you're taking new stuff in. In order to take something new in, you got to take something out. Yes. So you look at something and you say, ah, oh, we only sold some sort of number of boxes of these cigars. These should probably go. Yes. When it comes to these little manufacturers, I may be one of their biggest customers. And, oh, my God, he's killing with this. He's doing really good. But it's the bottom end of our cigar 
and and it is not catching on very good. That's talk- when the that's when the fight starts. Yeah. And Dave gets the look in his face like he's saving a little puppy. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to save the puppy or do you want to run a business? I'm not trying to be cutthroat, nah, cause but because you get to know these people and you feel bad that you're you're a big. It's not part personal. Of the, yeah, but you, you gotta somehow draw the line in. And as I removed myself from different parts of the business, I was the buyer for probably 25 years. And uh, I just bought everything. <laughs> I've heard, oh, come on, I've heard stories. He's yeah. what the reps would call a mark. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to remove myself from that. And, and it gets to the, the point where, you know, as I continue to fight and, I, and you guys say, Brand X has to go. And I go, he's a nice guy. We can't let this go. And, think, and eventually the day is going to come that the nice guy, you know, somebody else has to do it because you, you build a relationship up right. with these people and it, it, to them it feels personal or something, but you know, what are you going to do? Yep, and you hope somewhere down the line they can get their toe back in the water and with, with something else. Yeah, right? you don't slam the door completely yeah. so you're not totally cold-hearted. I, no, what I usually do is is take a little away at a time. All right, let's pull a couple of sizes. Or <laughs> He's pull notorious a for that. Yeah. All right, just whatever well the churchill's not selling that well we'll just get rid of the churchill yeah or or take it away from certain stores and keep it at the other store and just try to make it hang on as long as i possibly can but what i should be doing is peeling off like a band-aid say okay it's gone uh but then it'd be saying something to the manufacturer of you know why don't you do this why don't we have an event why don't we do that you know something and you know then you get, well, we're small and, you know, we're good the way we are. And I'm like, oh, God, you know, it's not going to end well. You, you, you think you're good, but you're not good. It's, and it's a two-way street because you've got uh, some manufacturers that would do an event every single weekend. You know, I'm one of those people yeah. that believes, you know, I walk into the liquor store on my way to my uncle's house and the, there's a rep standing there pitching his bottle of whatever. <laughs> I'm buying one because the yeah. guy came in and he sure. stood there and he's doing an event in quotes and this is the thing. So you walk in, you buy that, and I get my uncle's bottle of scotch. Right. But that's what that's what you should do in, in a cigar shop. Yeah. yeah. All right. So looking at the cigars, the highlights of uh, and I and I went through some catalogs. The oldest catalog I could find from two guys um, is. Oh, you big spender! Black and white. Black wow. and white, 1995. Um, so yeah, everything's black. Probably and white. your first. Two color printing is cheaper than four color. Right. I don't, that's think, I don't know if you could possibly do it, but I'll tell you, people talk about today cut and paste. Control C. Yeah. Control no, V. No, no. This was cut and paste. And you can see the scissor marks around the <laughs> around the cigar, and you know, I'd get the catalog of the brand and actually cut the cigar out, glue it to the piece of paper, and then, you know, that's what would get uh, printed. Using those kindergarten skills, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So I went, I went through and looked at some highlights of them, and I have some, a lot of old catalogs and stuff. Hand-typed. Yep. Um, a Toro Fuente 858. That was uh, really happening in 95. Um, it's six, um, six-inch cigar by 47 um, was the big seller. So 47 ring gauge. That was um, That was the was big ring then. gauge. Box of 25 uh, retailed. For thirty-five dollars and nineteen cents, it's a dollar forty per cigar. Toro Fuente eight five eight. I think they're a hundred and eighteen dollars now. Today one fifty-eight ninety-nine. Oh jeez, it's an increase of three hundred and fifty-two percent. That's one of the worst. Um, I was getting a dollar sixty-five per single when they were supposed to be a dollar forty because they were so popular. You, yeah, at that point, you're trying to slow it down. Um, today, I sell that cigar for seven dollars and forty nine cents. Uh, the other Toro Fuente out there that was very hot, uh, if you could get them, and it was the most expensive cigar I believe that we had in the store at the time, was the Toro Fuente Don Carlos Robusto. Uh, it was a box of twenty five, and it was a hundred and fifty dollars is what wow. we sold it for. A six dollar cigar, unheard of. Six dollar cigar. We had one customer. I saw him the other day in the store. I went over to him because I was in the middle of the research at that time. He's still a customer today. Customer today, George Antonakis. If you're listening, yes, he, he is. He's been a customer for my God, uh, more than 25 years. He got, and the reason why I mention him is he bought every single box 
of a Toro Fuente Dawn Collins we would get. We wouldn't get all that many. They would send us three here, another month or two goes by, three more, and he would say, if they ever come in, I'll take every one you get. So, all right. And, and he's still that guy. Yeah. I've got him on a, on a list for three different items, and when those items come in, he will take them all. Yeah. So $150, that was a big deal. And he actually lived here in New Hampshire. Our stores were all in Massachusetts at the time, and he would come down to go see us. Uh, today, that box of cigars from 150 is $209.99, which is only... A 40% increase. Wow. So you're seeing some major swings. The cheaper stuff, the dollar forty went up um, to seven dollars, but the um, the expensive cigar to begin with the six dollar cigar uh, becomes eight dollars and forty cents. So not that dramatic. Ashton Magnum is another one that went up high. It was a three dollar and five cents. That's a Robusto seventy six dollars and twenty five cents, which was kind of an expensive cigar breaking the three dollar barrier. There. Today is two oh seven, eight dollars and twenty six cents. It's a hundred and seventy one percent increase. Avo went from one oh six to one hundred and sixty two, fifty two percent increase. There was a hot brand at the time. I don't even think it exists. Barry, you can help me with this one if it does. Canaria Dioro. Do you remember that? Never even heard of that Never? one. Never. Wow, was that hot? Uh, it was a cigar made by General Cigar. Um, I believe Canary Dioro might have been Potagus. The same. There was so many cigars with the, which were the same exact cigar and packaged differently, like Coeur de Monterey and Punch. Uh, still today, there's a whole bunch of cigars that are the same as others. Five and a half by 49, Immenso was $34.19 for a box of 25, a dollar 36. Again, I can't find it anymore, but. That cigar for $1.36 was a monster. Cuesta Ray, number 95. Slow-moving cigar today. Big brand in the time. Sold for $1.45. $32 a box retail. Today, $126 a box. So it had a 294% increase wow. in price. Maybe that's the reason why. You know, it was it was the $1.45. That was, a, you know, under $1.50, more than a dollar. Good Sweet handmade spot, cigar. Really. Right. How about uh, Don Mateo? That was a bundle brand. That was the big bundle brand at the time. Six and a half by 50. That was considered a thick cigar at the time. Um, they sold, and it was called the number eight. It sold for $20 a bundle of 20, which is a dollar a cigar. Um, we sold that cigar. Um, no, we sold a cigar for a dollar. I don't know what we paid for it, but it was twenty dollars it cost us. Uh, I mean, we sold it for, and uh, that was the biggest seller of all because it was an even dollar or ninety-nine cents, and this is the one people grabbed whole bunches of. Um, today, I find that at fifty-four dollars for that bundle, uh, which is a hundred and seventy percent increase. La Gloria Cubana, even in my catalog, and I went through three or four catalogs. Uh, I have it on the list that it's there, Gloria Cubana. And it says, don't hold your breath waiting. I don't even put a price down because you just couldn't get the damn thing. No kidding. So, uh, yes, we do carry it. But if it, you're lucky enough to get it, it is what it is. That was a cigar that would just, you know, go out as fast as it did. Macanudo Baron de Rothschild. Big seller. Probably the biggest. That was probably our biggest selling cigar. Six and a half by 42 ring gauge. And the price was high. $2.85. So it was near the $3.00. Almost three dollar threshold right. was was where cigars were at that point. If, if it hits a three dollar range, forget it. You're never going to be able to sell it. So you're talking seventy dollars a box today. That box is a hundred and ninety six dollars, and it is a seven dollar and eighty five cent cigar. That's a hundred and eighty percent increase. And another big monster there was Tiamo Toro, two dollars and twenty five cents each. Forty-seven seventy-nine a box of twenty-five, which took it down to a dollar ninety-one if you bought the whole box. Today, that is a hundred and thirty dollars a box, a hundred and seventy-two percent increase. So I took those; those were the biggest sellers at the time, and it comes out to a hundred and seventy-eight percent average increase across the board. Which is the most increase of all the things. All the things average to 125%. Right. So this is 178. So it says to me that cigars went up more than everything else. But 
why did that happen? What is the reason why some of that happened? Well, there used to be a five cent tax on a cigar coming into the U.S. That five cent tax now is 41 cents tax. Dramatic change that happens there. Sure. You know, there was no sales tax on tobacco products then. And now there's a sales tax added to it. There, no, there were no state taxes that happened at that point. All this stuff <coughs> happened because of the boom in cigars. That all of a sudden there was attention to that. So if you start taking things off that, you take those federal taxes out and things like that, cigars are pretty much in line of it went up 125% in 25 years, which... Really, I don't see that as, as all that dramatic. One big thing that's happened, and, and this cigar is, uh, has not gone any stronger as uh, I'm smoking it down. The flavors really haven't changed. I mean, it's 25-year-old stick, so that's kind of to be expected. I think it's well past its prime. I bought my first cigar from you across the street in 1996 Okay. on my 18th birthday. At no point during our interaction, first of all, you didn't card me, uh, at no point in our... You were bald, and he had a beard. <laughs> uh, at no point during our conversation did the subject of the strength of the cigar come up. Yeah, now, back, back in those days. Back I in know. those days, everything was pretty mild. You could smoke any cigar in the shop, and except for one or two that would be considered strong for the time, they'd fall in medium now. Uh, 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 the, the majority of cigars that were sold then were Dominican or Honduran. There was virtually no Nicaraguan cigars. We were, we were uh, post the embargo, but there was one company making cigars, uh, Bailey, and that's Hoya de Nicaragua. Um, but there must have... T- yeah, what did they Diamo, do? which was the Mexican, Mexican cigar. Everything else was Honduran or Dominican. What did they do with the high-priming tobacco? I mean, you, you would expect they're going to use it all. They didn't learn learn to make fuller bodied cigars but at that point. I don't know if if they weren't um, taking the leaves off and letting it go to the top plant or what was going on at the time, uh, or the uh, weren't aging the tobaccos that long. What you would get is what people believe to be fuller bodied cigars, but what they were was under fermented right. cigars. It was raw. And people, still to this day, there's people that under-ferment <coughs> cigars. And people say, that cigar's really full-bodied and stuff. It's, it's under-fermented. It's all, you know, th- this cigar probably was under-fermented at that point. 25 years will end up, you know. I'm sure some of it also had to do with the types of tobacco used. I mean, you had Connecticut, Connecticut back then, yeah. which was a milder tobacco. And no Ecuadorian. <coughs> a, lot of, yeah, a lot of cigars were Cameroon, that uh, Canaria, the Oreo, the Oro cigar that you said. Yeah. Uh, it ceased in 2001, but it was made in the Dominican Republic with a Cameroon wrapper. I believe it was Partagas. That's it might have Cameroon. become yeah. Partagas. Oh, no, I think it was. Oh, okay. I think it was the exact same thing, packaged different. I think it was the exact same brand. I think. Mm-hmm. And a little bit off topic to a small degree, the chat room wants to know in the 25 years since we're talking 1994 to now, what's the, the biggest thing that you might have learned to help shape your business that it is today? Obviously hire me. No, not at all. It, uh, yes. You know, it, it became, uh, you know, treating it as a business and saying, what are my margins? What are my real costs of what that is? And how can I end up, <coughs> you know, you see the little little amounts of money that are in there. Okay, I get 27 cents if I sell this cigar. Um, if I buy so many of these, I can get it up to 40 cents. I can, oh my God, I get 50 cents if I end up buying all these. And then... Um, then somebody comes in and says, well, if you have our brand at 60 cents, and maybe at the beginning, I'm like, nobody knows what that brand is. I'm not going to take that brand. Well, let me take that brand. If, if the brand is good, let me show it to the customer. If I can get them on it and get another 10 cents if they happen to end up liking it because uh, there, w- there was no money in some of these brands. That uh, you know, If you were a store selling a little bit of cigars and not getting discounts and making 20 cents on each one, you couldn't expand and open store the next store and, and grow your business, and th- that became a big part of it. I was always, even as a disc jockey, I was into building the next song, right, the, the next artist. I listened to a song. Wow, this sounds really good. I never heard of this guy. Let me play it in the club. Play it the next night, the next night. Get people on it. The next thing you know, they're saying, who is this? And the song becomes popular. I did the same with cigars. You know, it's especially something's new and comes in. And Well, nobody's asking for this. That's because nobody knows about it. Let me 
tell people about it. And, um, you know, your product mix is everything. If you're a store owner asking this question, <coughs> your, your, your product mix is the biggest thing. It's vital. Yeah. Uh, right now it's time for the matchup of the week. Brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Would you rather be an average, not famous professional athlete on your current salary or wealthy, well-renowned professional in the field, but you don't care about mathematical, classic musician, whatever? Huh? What? Okay. Would you rather be an average, not famous professional athlete on your current salary or a wealthy, well-renowned professional in a field you don't care about? Oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a mathematician, classical musician, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but... Um, but you, not care. There's no passion to it. Yeah. So do you follow your passion, which is a very interesting question, actually, when it comes to yeah. um, even going back 25 years ago. Yeah. As you alluded the other day, I really like getting up and going to work. I'll, I'll take happiness for my job with the current salary. If you want to pay me with a, a high-end baseball player makes, I wouldn't complain. Uh, but I'd rather be happy at what I do than be miserable. Get paid less. Yeah, money isn't, a, money isn't everything. Yeah, but that question really isn't about misery. It's a tolerable, something that you don't if really you don't, care if, about. If you don't care about it, to me, that's not so, tolerable. I could be like a studio, <clears throat> phenomenal studio oboe player and make millions. I think I would do that. But see, you like music. So no, no, no. In this scenario, I don't care about the music. I just am yes. doing it so, for the money. So, so let you be a, a top-notch mathematician. Perfect. You don't I'm care in. about that as opposed to doing what you like. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah? A so taste yeah. tester at a chocolate factory. Would you do that? Yes. That's something do you that don't too. like. You're going to follow the money. Going the, I'm going the money. Ed Sullivan. It's a very confusing question. It is for you because I think <clears throat> you, you, you did well, it I, both I ways. I did something, yeah, that I didn't particularly care for at the end. Uh, paid a lot of money. Yeah. And then decided, okay, well. I'm going to work at a podcast cafe I instead. Have I have enough money. Let's go do something fun for a while. You know, so it's a different question. If you have no money, yeah, what are you going to do? Continue to have no money at what you love or go make some money? Well, in 1985, I was a successful nightclub disc jockey making a lot of money. And I did both of them for a few years, but I ended up going with the cigar business that I loved because I couldn't stand working in the nightclubs anymore. Although it paid so much money. It was so hard to, to get out of there. It was so tempting all the time. And since then, even owning the stores, I'd get calls from some clubs and, oh, so-and-so is opening and they're going to overpay you to come do the grand opening or something. You, you know, come on, do it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I'd stay and work and make $20 that day. And instead of taking the $500, I could be doing the but club. But you loved it. Well, I love doing the the smoke shop. Right. I hated the nightclub. I'm with you. Dave, some retired DJs just keep working. Right. Shut up, As Ed a DJ. Sullivan. Right. He says he's going to do it, but he went for the money tonight. So this is a perfect question it's because Jonathan, even, it's DJing not even tonight. It's not even a big money gig. I, it's not, I didn't retire completely. I'm still doing the swing let's rewind, stuff. Let's rewind the tape how many times he said he retired. <laughs> then it's, well, I didn't do well, it on the swing. Well, let's not forget he quit this show, too. And right. Yeah, he's a quitter. Uh, doesn't make him a bad guy. But he's not very good at it, oh, apparently. It actually does make him a bad guy. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, um, let me wrap this up here on this. Would you please? Um, our 10-year anniversary catalog, winter of 1995. I have that here somewhere. That's the black and white one. Of 1995? Isn't that it? No. It's this one. Uh, spend a little bit more on this one. Ah, two colors. I got, I got red in there <laughs> and a mixture of red. You must have read a book. That said red was um, an eye-catching color. So in here somewhere, oh, here it is. Do you have this uh, slide of the anniversary party? Nope. You know, I, I had four. All right. So Jonathan's going to make it happen. All right, though. he's making it happen. So that's our uh, 
anniversary party, our 10-year anniversary. This year, by the way, is 34. So uh, you'll see on that, very interesting, it announces the party, $85 to go. Um, and if I guess you add the 125%, uh, we're good at the 225 we are this year. Uh, but it introduces the Potagus 150. That's where Potagus 150. Which that, was a great cigar. That was the first place in the world that it was, was ever smoked. That was the introduction of it, uh, uh, maybe about three weeks previous to the launch of it, because uh, Edgar Cullman, who was the president of the general, uh, allowed me to do it because I said it's an important date for me, if, if you could possibly get them to me. Oh, and some poor bastard smoked it that night. Everybody uh, did. Crazy. Nobody knew. For $85, you got eight cigars. And one of them was the Potagus 150. The other cigar, and not just the Potagus 150, it was the Series AA, which is the big one. Gloria Cubana Torpedo Number no. 1, which is the hottest cigar going at the time, followed by Licenciado Toro, big cigar at the time. Romeo and Juliet Vintage Number no. 1, which I had named the Cigar of the Year that year. Pleiades, that was the mo most expensive cigar that was out in the market uh, then. It was uh, from France. Santa Demiani, high-end uh, general cigar, Astral Perfection. Remember Astral? Yeah, they used to have one in a glass tube, I think. Um, and then we had a, a, a band there and um, 85 bucks. See, I remember the Particus 150 when I lived in New York. It was around an $18 cigar. Sure. Um, humidor prices right in this catalog. $450 for a humidor. A crappy Regular. humidor as well. 25-count humidor. Four hundred and fifty dollars on sale for three hundred and ninety five, not nearly as good as the, the humidors we have for hundred and twenty nine dollars. Right. Cigar jars, the empty acrylic cigar jar, which by the way I invented, um, with a little humidifier in there. Uh fifty dollars for the empty acrylic humidor. Uh box of Hoy de Monterey is in here. Um, let me find that. Yeah. Um that's H. Upman. But H. Upman. Buy a box of H. Upman. And you get a free Norelco uh, electric shaver. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's what my dad used to use. Um, here's the Hoya de Monterey Dreams. Um, box of 50 for $110. And you get a Dream Machine clock radio for free. Nuts. Huh? Facebook chat's asking who made the uh, Lisiandos, if you remember. Licenciado was Mike Cigars in um, Florida, in oh. the Miami area of Florida. So... Uh, yeah, crazy stuff, right? $10 bundles. Um, we have um, cigar, um, the, the following issue was the Cigar of the Year, um, Puros Indios. Um, first noticed the, the next catalog that came out, which is 2000, um, 1996. In this catalog is Cigar of the Year, Puros Indios. The first notice of online. No kidding. Our first online, 1996. Uh, I'll dig through it on the And channel. it's weird. Like, you know, people that are, got into cigar smoking late, you mentioned Puros Indios. Yeah. You think of what it became. But back oh. then, it was a phenomenal cigar. Here it is here. Computer guys, check us out on the World Wide Web. HTTP colon www dot N-E-T-I-N-S dot net slash showcase slash Fuji Sig slash two guys. The craziest thing. Yeah. Now, what I ended up doing, or go to nightclub.com, N-I-T-E club.com, which rolled into this because I was in a nightclub business and I had, you had a, website, a website and you just... <laughs> and I rolled it into, into that That's so awesome. that it would end up getting used. Um, so that was the last edition of the catalog before we ended up coming to, um, to New Hampshire. Uh, and in this, we mentioned Red Owlback is coming to town and all that stuff. So uh, that's all I have uh, on that. There's so much. I could go back in time forever. I'm an old dude. So that's what we got is old memories. And especially if you dig through old paperwork that I hang on to for all these years, um, it helps me remember what I forgot. So, uh, speaking of forgetting, um, Sir Dick Don Pepe Robusto, 1994. I'm going to say a flavor note that I get on here is salty. Very, very salty. Well, you also had a relight. Yeah. Which tends to boost the salt component. It's actually not terrible. I didn't mind it. 
No, it, it, it's really, a, for me anyways, a non-event. Uh, clearly aged. You can see the combustion line is almost non-existent. But not a cigar to hold on to for 25 no, years. No, no. I don't want to be mean or anything, but it, it kind of reminded me of like a Villiger export. Mm. You know, that sort of. Yeah. Some of the, the dry cigars that have Sumatra or yeah, Brazilian. Yeah. In yeah, Sumatra's got that bitingness to, to what it is. Uh, this is an idea, though, of what a cigar tasted like 25 years ago. When we tell you cigars today taste better than they ever did before, here it is. And, and if anything, the aging improved it, right? M mellowed it out a bit and took sure. away the sharp edges of the, the harshness or whatever was going on at that point. And then you smoke a cigar with richness <coughs> that nothing had at that point. There was no standout rich tastes, bold flavors or anything like that. It was all this um, washed over type of... Um, yeah, relying on cedar to give it flavor yeah. rather than on relying every, on the tobacco. Uncellophaned cedar on every single roll. Yeah. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to Obviously. give it some flavors that, that were there. So uh, that's it. When we come back, I'm going to light up a cigar from the care package that I care about that will be making a major facelift in the very near future as it celebrates its 25-year anniversary. We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create the this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast or better yet passionado cigar journal covers cigars in the u.s and around the world and is printed right here in the usa you owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine cigar journal available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website cigarjournal.com that's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. 
The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Nelson Afronso from Selected Tobacco, the company who made and manufactured Atabe, Byron and Bandolero. You are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back with our number two, broadcasting live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in a cigar I made in 1994, which has had had its packaging changes in the past. It's about to have, have its packaging changed once again. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. So we're talking going back 25 years ago today, uh, going through the catalog as we are. Um, no Rocky Patel, no Perdomo, no Acid. No, none of these brands and big name people did yeah. not exist. You're going to start seeing very shortly the 25th anniversaries, probably in two years from now, start seeing them because that's when they came in, probably 1996, 95, 96, 97. These people started coming in during the height of the cigar boom. They probably are, you know, trying to get the brands made at this time, 25 right. years ago. And by the time they get out, get launched, get to a trade show, you couldn't even get a placement at the trade show to have a booth space. I mean, people were having little suites upstairs, and they'd hand you a little card, go up into the suite, we got some food and drink, and we want to show you our new cigar. All kinds of craziness was going on at that time. And I, I remember sitting there at one of the suites, and a few people got together and booked a suite. I believe it was Rocky Patel, um, Tony Bahani, which was Bahia, um, Felipe Gregorio, um, Maybe Cusano, you know, just a bunch of them got together, got a suite. All playing well together. They couldn't get a space, so they said, okay, let's split this. And in this big suite that they have, they got their little table set up or something, and you'd go there after the trade show and go up there, smoke out room like you wouldn't even believe and stuff. And there's these little guys. trade show. 
and I'm sitting at the table, and I don't remember who it was that uh, the other retailer I'm sitting with talking. You know, and, and, it, could, and it could have been um, uh, Jeff Borshowitz at Corona. I mean, I used to hang out with him in those early days and stuff. And saying, you know what, this what we're looking at is probably the future because the other guys at the booths were all the old guys that were in there for years and years. Yeah. And these were the young bucks or something, the next generation that was going to come up. And it happened. It really happened. It, you, and now those guys. young bucks are the old guys. Okay, correct. Now 25 years later. Nicholas Trey yeah. moving up. Yeah. Um, so, but, but these were not family members of these companies. These were people that, you know, they're not going to pull off this get on the horse with the hat and all this crap that was going on. There's no way they can pull that off. So what is going to be their game plan? And, right. you know, with smoke their cigars, and, again, every, nothing was very good. You know, it wasn't like you lit one up and you went, wow, here it comes. Here's the next thing. Although I remember the little table of Padron, when they show up at a trade show, and that's about then, they weren't in those catalogs either. Um, they come a couple of years later, and they're set up for the first time, uh, and you smoke that cigar, and you go, wow, there was some bold flavor yeah. that wasn't happening. So anybody that had that, it kind of stood out. Um, but this is where I ended up making a cigar, um, and it's La Giana, and this is the Maduro, the Corona Maduro. Tell us about this, Barry. Well, the La Giana Maduro is manufactured in Honduras by United Cigars. The size is 5.5 by 44, which is a Corona, and it features a Maduro wrapper over binder and fillers from Honduras. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back six ninety nine. while a box of 20 is one nineteen ninety nine which is a savings of about $20 or 14% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So this is the Corona. This is the Corona Maduro. <coughs> this is the slowest moving size of any La Giana. Why is that? 25 years ago, it was probably a big selling size. Right. But it got into bigger things that sell, and we have the sizes that we have, and this happens to be a small one. I happen to like it, but that's part of the care package. See what you guys think. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands are raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal less chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And uh, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Arthur Kemper of yes. Perdomo Cigars. <coughs> yeah. 46 <coughs> today. Today. Today is his birthday. Oh. Thought it was yesterday. According to the Facebooks. Mm -hmm. They celebrated yesterday in uh, in the office. Miami Lakes area. Okay. L little uh, licorice. Licorice, 100%. Yeah. On the cold draw, you folks at home, it's obvious. Don't give that look. Nailed it. No. Yeah, That's I can't wait to see what he thinks. Lemon he gets. and honey. Real lemon and honey mixed together. Yeah, I don't get any bitterness off it. No, the sweet. honey gives you the sweet. That's what I taste, anyway. Yeah, it's like a little bit of Sambuca. You're a little bit of Sambuca. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone 2 featuring three jets. Double wall protection at the top, so the lighter just does not heat up. You get an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, and of course, the patented Vertigo big ass tank. That's the Vertigo Cyclone 2 for $14.99. Okay, so about this time, 1994. Um, looks like we're having a baby, and uh, there become some early complications, and they have to go amniocentesis or something like that which is actually go in and extract a little liquid to see if the baby's yeah, going to be fluid. okay. Yep. Right. So they do that, and they said to us, everything's going to be okay. Uh, it wasn't what we thought or whatever. You can go ahead with your cigar brand now. <laughs> but we do know if it's going to be a boy or a girl at this point. Now we absolutely know positively, do you want to know? And said, sure. Why would you not want to know? I, I find it so odd when people say, no, we want to be surprised. We're going to be surprised right this second. No, there's a What's there's a gonna... thing to it where the mom carries the baby for all this time. I just heard about this. And the dad, being the first one to know the gender, he has this ability to have that connection because he's the first one to know. Oh, God. That's if he's in the room. 
Well, of course he's in the room. Not everybody goes in the room. I didn't know you couldn't, but yeah. I was. I know some people who have yeah. refused to go in the room. That's I, crazy. I would rather not have been in the room. But anyway, <laughs> that's another whole story. <laughs> the nurses came to me after the baby was born. <laughs> One on each arm You're and be sat okay, in buddy. the chair and said, "You'll be okay." And my wife's looking and saying, "Hey, hey." <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm the one over here, but you are, I you, guess the blood left the body. You are a wimp when it <laughs> yeah. comes to injuries. But Oof. I mean, at my daughter's birth, the, the doctor said to me, do you want to cut the cord? I said, well, do I get a discount? She <laughs> said, no. I said, you do you it. Do it. <laughs> You're probably better at it than I me. I would think. Yeah. No, I didn't do no cutting the cord either. No, I was bad. Can I bite through it? <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> but anyway, they say it's going to be a girl, and I'm saying to myself, okay, uh, I have to pass out cigars. I own three cigar shops back in those days, and um, I'm going to have to pass out a cigar, so I might as well pass out a cigar and put the name on it. So we had a, already had a discussion if it's going to be a boy, if it's going to be a girl, what, what is the thing? And my wife got to pick the girl's name, and I got to pick the boy's name, and it's going to be a girl, so it's going to be Gianna. So there was La Gloria Cubana, so I thought La Gianna Havana. And Pretty good. And here, here it becomes, and Gloria Cubana was the big thing, mm -hmm. so her name's going to be Gianna, so we'll go with La Gianna Havana. So I make these yellow bands, and you'll, you, it's in the catalog of the first ones that were made, uh, and literally I print the bands out, and I cut them, and I didn't make a straight band. Of course, I have <laughs> cut, and I cut a bunch just to have some on hand to be able to uh, band up some cigars and uh, see how it's going to look and all that. <clears throat> then I say, okay, this is what it's going to be. Who, what band person do I go to? Who makes the cigar? What do I do here? And uh, I have the brand made in Honduras, and um, it's Caribbean, uh, Carib, Carib. Carib, which Carib made uh, cigars for Nat Sherman, and they made cigars for themselves. And they made cigars for other people too, but those are the ones I, I knew of, or you'd know who they are. But later they became Camacho. And they had Baccarat, and they had uh, a brand called National Brand and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I like the Nat Sherman, but I don't like the sweetness that's on the, the whole series. Can we try it without doing that? Now can you make it uh, a little more golden color and whatever and we made the natural and that's what came out and as people as i was giving it away after i had the baby everybody said these cigars are great and uh, oh my god these are fantastic uh not realizing that they loved free cigars and they were just looking for another free <laughs> cigar but um it got me to say okay let's really do this thing and let's box it and have this brand but didn't the real thing with la Giana happen when you had given the okay and the patent rights to gary scott international for the cigar jar and as a gift to you they put la Giana in it for the uh ad that's when it got national but we were selling it in the store but um when i came up with the cigar jar and they said okay we're gonna go with this thing and i said yeah just take the take it and go with it no charge go sell it and have a good time so they owned it and the and the gift was in a cigar aficionado magazine um, they put a full-page ad with the jar filled with La Giana cigars, which was great. You know, I look at it and I say, oh, my God, look at La Giana in there. And they gave me a big blow-up of it and the whole bit. And uh, what was happening is they were selling a lot of cigar jars, but people were saying, how do we get that cigar? And after the hundredth time somebody said, how do we get that cigar? He says to me, sell us the cigar so we can sell the cigar too. The people are asking. We just keep saying no to them. And I said, all right. So they ended up taking La Giana. And I think La Giana was in three, 400 stores wow. at the time. And we're talking probably 95 by then. Um, but this cigar is 25 years old. And it's, it's, old, it's an older brand. And it's been out nonstop um, all these years, including, uh, you know, before rocky and perdomo and all this stuff it's there but certainly not the attention that i think it deserves um the natural is your grandfather's connecticut it's smooth and creamy and buttery yeah. and exactly the way i wanted it to be and the maduro um has more flavors to it i get um overcooked toast with butter and maybe yeah. some sweetness on it maybe the sugar or a little orange marmalade yeah Okay. Oh, now you're getting citrus. 
Isn't that remarkable? Yeah, not lemon. <laughs> Sour puss. Anyway, so that's what happened there. Um, it was a yellow band. Then years later, as she started getting older, uh, we made the little angel a little older, and we went into a red band and um, changing the style of the boxes. And now, in, in um, this year, 2019, you're going to see a whole new box, a whole new band. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's something very different. I don't think anyone's ever used packaging like this before. Um, and expect that, hopefully, for the IPCPR trade show, because today, La Giana is distributed through United Cigar. So it continues on there. So we'll watch for those packaging and all that. But right now, uh, let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm <coughs> where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars, with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. A 27-year-old Indian man is going viral after he announced an intent to sue his parents claiming he did not give his explicit consent to bring him into the world. In a video posted to YouTube, he states, I want everyone to realize one thing, that they are born without their consent. I want them to understand that they do not owe their parents anything. If we are born without our consent, we should be maintained for our life. We should pay, be paid by our parents to live. He added, to children I'd like to say, do not do anything for your parents if you do not want to. His mother was quoted after she returned from the basement after feeding him dinner. If Raphael can come up with a rational explanation of how he could have sought consent before being born, I will accept my fault. And lady, I will say it is your fault for raising a kid like this. And that's not only insane, it's asylum. And some of the things that changed 25 years ago is the backhand. Yes. They now stuck. you go to jail if you give somebody yeah, the backhand. Yeah, the backhand. If you go 25 years before that, let me tell you the stuff that used to happen. But, wow. Nuts. Yeah. This world has changed. The pendulum is all the way it can be. So it's going to come back, right? It I can't go any further than so. this. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, you got a mailbag you got to get to here? I do have a mailbag. Right. Uh, Evan writes through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. Gentlemen and Mr. Jonathan. <laughs> they always get to start with the dick. Yeah. <laughs> the Dos Ombre show was very hard to listen to. I wound up fast forwarding the first half hour because it was a brutal infomercial. In the second hour, you never talked about the cigar. I understand that you don't carry it, but what about being fair journalists? Please, we get that you are a two guys smoke shop, but I don't want to hear a 30 minute ad for bundles. David Barry, keep up the good work. You both make Mr. Jonathan almost tolerable. So it was a 30-minute ad only because you fast-forwarded the other 30 minutes. It was a one hour talking about that cigar because we <laughs> talked about one hour about each cigar for nine years. And then on the second one, we didn't talk enough about the cigar because we didn't know yeah. anything about it. I happen to know everything about the Dos Ombre cigar, so I could tell you everything. Damned if As you I, do, damned if you don't. Yeah, so you can't make everybody happy. No. And thank God he's got that fast-forward thing. <laughs> And he's also got the off button, too. He can just shut it off. What? It, sometimes you're a little long-winded when it comes to things you're proud about. And you're very proud of Dos Ombre. I get it. So you're proud of La Giana. So we got to do a different brand of each thing. And that was it was Dos Ombre. I know everything about it. I understand. I created it. I understand. So but if, if you interviewed me on it, I, you could interview me on, about that brand because we had the brand owner on. <laughs> who happened to be me <laughs> as we do right now now have I now I have to be worried am I talking too much about La Giana I no. don't think so but it was too much about Dos Ombre that happens to have 30 something different it's things it's a cigar snob that couldn't get past the fact that the majority of the line is a bundle there are some and people it's pretty who damn refu- good for a bundle but they refuse to smoke bundles so I'm, re- I'm listening to that as cigar snobbery at its finest. Yeah, and by the way, we sold at least a million more of them than we did on the second cigar 
in the hour. Which we sold none of. There was the football. Yes. That they made 10 boxes, over 20 boxes. We sell 1.2 million Dos Ombre. So we should talk more about the one that you can't buy and you can't get it and whatever. Yeah, it was only available in Atlanta. Yeah. What see, you, you see what you've done, Evan? You've turned him sour. What you can't get is the ombre ashtray for free unless you do it right now. <laughs> Operators <laughs> are standing yeah. by. Right. And there's the infomercial. That's it's right. back. You thought it was gone, Evan. It's not. Yeah. And if you act now if in the first 20 up, minutes, gonna... we'll put a smiley face on the invoice. There we go. But, yeah, you, you bring it up, and then we're automatically right. talking about it again. So what you got to do is stop talking about it because you bring it back up. And did it sell well? Do you? The ombres, ombre it, it, it did well. Good. Yeah. Okay, and they have till Monday morning to yeah. do it again. Because oh. and, wh- and what do they day. do? What do they do, Barry? They uh, in the comment section, you're gonna put hombre, H O M B R E, and you automatic get, you automatically get the free ombre yeah. ashtray with put any hombre box of bond- Don't forget. Has he forgot? No. No. All right. He's the guy that packages these things. But he's always complaining that people leave comments for me or, or you know, what's occasionally there'll be a comment about for Jonathan or about Jonathan. And he goes, how come nobody ever mentions me? Ah, Mention Pete in the comments. Make him oh, happy. Oh, make him happy. <laughs> if he gets a, hey, Pete, you're the man or something. I'll Ooh. end up getting a phone call. Yeah. The whole company will. <laughs> Pete's a good guy. Yeah, he is. All right, let's find out what's up in the world of cigars with Barry Stein. It's time for What's What's Up up? in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And we've reported about the measure to raise the tobacco age of Virginia. And we're set to report has passed the House and it has passed the Senate, which now means it's on the governor's desk. And if he signs it, it will raise the smoking age in Virginia to 21. In Hawaii, for the third year in a row, a bill has been introduced that would ban Internet cigar sales to the Aloha State. I think it should be like a trial. You know, if you, if you can't get it through, you know, you can't find somebody guilty on the first, you can't double indemnity. Right. That's it. You lost, move on. Yeah, they, they keep going and they wear you down and then yeah. someday in the middle of the night they pass it. That's yeah. what... Same deal. And meanwhile, in Colorado, a bill has been introduced that would make cigar smoking illegal in cigar shops. Meanwhile, you can smoke marijuana in marijuana dispensaries. At every corner in in the whole state. It's crazy. This week, United Cigar and Selected Tobacco sent out a press release noting the company is taking measures against counterfeiting. Moving forward, all Atabay cigars will feature a secondary footband. And within minutes... Well, with that, we also, I mean... People are selling them, selling... Unbanded. Unbanded cigars saying these are out of base, and instead of it's being not, $30, they're $20, but they're not. They're not the right cigar. It's not. There's no. There's nobody selling their cigars, never mind out of base, nobody's brands, without the band no. on it. So, And within minutes of an email announcing he was leaving Nat Sherman, another email showed up announcing David Lafferty would be joining Steve Sockers, Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. As VP of Sales. I knew it, but I couldn't say it. Yeah. So that was a, let me hold up, but. It's like Voltron. You know, that, they, that was they all work together the yes. in Drew Estate, and then they kind of blew apart, and now they're reassembling Voltron yes. under Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Or, or Nick Malillo, that he's hmm. getting the other ones over there, so between them two, they're going to end up. So what I'll tell you happens is corporate world. I mean, right. it becomes a different thing. Well, it's a it relationship was a, It business. was a fraternity turned into corporate, yeah. and they're not happy with that. Not that there's anything wrong with the company or anything. It becomes a different environment, and then they say, okay, I want back to that fun. I just don't understand, and not taking anything away from Mr. Lafferty here, but Steve's kind of a dick. Like, why would you leave a, a really nice job and then go work for him? Well, because it's Philip Morris that owns it. And it's a whole different world, and, and they have a different agenda that, um, you know, we're, we're fighting a under-21 thing here. Yeah, they want right. to go from 21 to 18 here in New Hampshire, yeah. and already— In Altria's home state, it's happening. Yeah. They say in Altria's behind the 20—they want yes, it to be 21. they want it to be. So here they are. 
And, uh, yeah, you can go to war, but you can't enjoy an adult product, so yeah. go figure. Yeah. And finally, Two Guys Smoke Shop has announced the 34th anniversary would feature a VIP trip for six to Las Vegas and 18 cigar celebrities. Tickets for what I call the best event in the cigar industry go on sale May 4th. Good luck getting tickets, and may the 4th be with you. May the 4th be I with you. I feel like you really should have some sort of disclaimer on that and directed directly at Evan. Evan, we're going to do a little shameless plug here yeah. on our show. Uh, we're going to talk about the anniversary party. And don't forget, if you order hombre, those hombre cigars and you put in hombre <laughs> in the comment field, you're going to get a really cool ashtray. Right, but just till Monday. On Tuesday, it's all over. Yes. So that's that. Next week, we're going to do uh, cigar pairing again. We did it with, with movies before. Now we're going to add some music, food, drinks, and some oddball Ugh. stuff, like a prostate exam. What cigar would go perfect with a prostate exam? The Das exam? Hombre Emperor. Ah, much amp- like, yeah. much like. <laughs> and you get an ashtray if you get a whole bundle of those. The Godfather. <laughs> I've never had a prostate exam. Really? I'm only 41. <coughs> oh, I what? thought you would have signed up at 20 he, he, years he old. He calls it what's, something different. <laughs> what's the age? What's the age you're supposed to do it the first time? Uh, I haven't I been think, to the doctors in 15 years. No, I think you're supposed to do it at 40 anyway. Really? But I did it much earlier. Just in case? No, I was having problems, and I was worried something was wrong. I'm 49. Stress. The last couple of times to the doctor, he goes, you're due for one, but we'll wait. Because he don't want to <laughs> do, do it. He don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> My doctor, would, for the prostate, just to reach up thing or something, he says, do you want to do the prostate? I said, no. Mm-hmm. Do I want to do it? What kind of question is that? <laughs> no. Can I, can I have Jonathan come in as proxy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should sign up for that. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. And then you give us a, a, a head-to-head battle against it, and you say, what I'll have cigar- my phone on. I'll be doing a play-by-play. What, what cigar pairs with this? Would Let's he even feel a the- finger? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get the finger up the butt, though, right? I haven't been to the doctors in 15 years. So I- you never had that, too? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, my God. You better do it, man. It's I no should no probably joke. do it. You should. All right, uh, so next week we'll get to that. You got an iTunes review? You want to yeah, see some we, iTunes reviews? we got a couple of iTunes reviews that have come in since the last time we talked about them. Uh, we got Tex and Dean saying, The perfect podcast for all those who enjoy premium cigars. There is something informative from the beginner to the cigar veteran. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, DMV Greg. That's an interesting name. Uh, I love this group of guys. Fun interactions between hosts, and I always learn something new. By the way... New England accents are the best. We can't help it. Dave can't help it. Uh, Flex McBuffchest writes, <laughs> hey, he gave us a five-star review, so no, no, we'll take he can it. put whatever name he wants. Uh, hey, guys, I'm a new listener from Chicago. Been listening about a month and a half. I love listening to all the great funny segments on the show. Been smoking for about two months now, but can't seem to really get the flavors most people describe. Any tips for growing my palate? Or am I just screwed? I have a tip. Eat real pizza, not that deep dish stuff you have in Chicago. Why do you got to be a dick? That's what I do. If you can blow it through your nose. No, don't do that. Do it. Just a little bit. No. Take the smoke in, blow most of it out, and just do the last little bit <laughs> through your nose. No. Not like he does it. And, you, and you're going to taste what you do. What you do is you get a cigar with kind of known flavors. Padron 1964 Maduro is known for its cocoa component. And you get yourself some unsweetened cocoa and you dip your finger in the cocoa and you taste the cocoa and you smoke the cigar and you allow your brain to find those similarities between the two. we do with the nuts and the... Correct. And once you've connected enough of those, your brain will take over and it'll start looking at the smoke and putting the smoke flavor away, but it'll start looking for those food flavors... That we talk about. And you say putting the smoke away. I think it's very important for somebody that's starting out wanting to get flavors to do the cold draw. It's easier to pull the, the flavors with the cigar not lit. Yeah. And it'll prepare your mind to help you receive them as you're smoking. Yeah, because you, a lot of people say, I don't taste anything in the smoke. And it's not the smoke. It's after you blow the smoke right. out. <coughs> now it's what's left, what's lingering. Spicy there. hot chocolate, like what I'm getting right now. Yeah, yeah I, there's a little Swiss miss. I got a espresso and Sambuca. You stuck on the licorice, huh? Yes, I am. I'm stuck on the liquor. <laughs> yeah, you're back. I'm back. You're back. Yeah, I had a whole bottle last night. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's bad. 
I just stayed up a little too late, and I feel like I'm hungover. Drank a bottle of whiskey. You drank a bottle of whiskey. Rum. Whatever. Bottle of rum. So uh, one more. We got uh, Red Dirt Legend. Uh, if you love cigars, love being entertained, this is the podcast for you. And uh, if I've learned anything, it's to keep the lit end out of my mouth. Yay. Keep up the great work. Okay, get your little hook at the end. I like listening. that. It's Thank you for that. iTunes reviews. It helps. Thank you for that. La Gianna Corona Maduro. Been around a long time. Yeah, 25 years. It re- re- revitalized my interest in the brand when we had our meeting here. And we smoked it without the band. I had smoked it so many times over the last four years. Removing the band reignited my passion for the cigar. Is that what we did on the... Uh, yes. Oh, we did this blind test. That's right. Okay. We're going to get to uh, other cigars in the next hour and tell you um, what was hot and what was not. We're, we're talking back in time right now. We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding. The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, 
nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. Hi, this is Tony Serino. And this is Carson Serino. From Serino Cigars. You are <coughs> listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Tony Serino. Okay, we're back. We're smoking La Giana Corona Maduro. It's celebrating 25 years this year. We went back in time 25 years ago to 1994. Um, and now we're looking at um, La Giana having a facelift. But, you know, a lot of brands had facelifts over the years, uh, including La Giana. It had facelift before, but doing it again. And you see that on a lot of packaging changes, packaging changes. The scary part is you make a packaging change, and then people think, oh, my God, the blend has changed right. or whatever. Um, FDA says you can't make the blend changes. You can make packaging changes. But look at the dramatic change of Camacho, for instance. Huge. It was just a round, round face brown band, uh, one color, much like um, a regular Padron type of, of look. That's how everything was. It was a sea of brown. And then you started seeing people start adding colors and things like that. And they ended up going with a wide, giant wide band. I think mm -hmm. bands are larger in size uh, for the majority. You for take, sure. You take Skip Mott, and he has a little slender band. But right. the majority of people end up going wider and, and more advertising space, right? Right. And I think also Camacho did a change on a lot of the packaging because if memory serves me correct, there was a wood issue. So they outsourced their boxes from China. Yeah. And they were the, done by in-solo yes. packaging. Yeah. There's a wood issue in, in uh, Honduras for sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's where um, La Giana was made. Mm -hmm. And we're having the boxes, um, the new boxes actually made in the Dominican Republic and shipped to Honduras. Because they just can't do it. They can't, uh, not enough good wood to right. be able to do it. You know, the reason why is that the people that live there actually cut the trees down and burn the brush and take it because they need wood for their stoves and all right. that stuff like this. And they don't replant and they just destroy the property. And actually when they end up burning the tree, nothing can grow in that spot any, ever again for some reason. I don't think that's correct. Yeah. But look at Perdomo. Perdomo's had yeah. a huge package change and a huge jump in market share as a result yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. So as, as they're learning, they're learning the packaging does count. His bands have got bigger, shinier, more attention getting. Yeah, he's using that, the Holland company that makes that beautiful gold. Yeah. And even he had a beautiful band to begin with, and then he showed me it side. But I think you were with me, actually. Yeah. Shows the side by side and says, what do you think with the change we're making? And, oh, my God, it pops out. It jumps Way off. Way it, it was It was the same thing, but wow. He's got the silent salesman that flips out of the yeah. box yeah. with all the, the flavor notes. An interesting one is Miami Cigar, who made dramatic changes in their packaging over the years, right. and now are going back to the old. 
Right, with the uh, Nesta Miranda special selection coming back out with the old packaging. Yeah. And the Nesta Miranda collection featured the new packaging. So How do you know what, them? What's old is new again. Yeah. Did you work there? <clears throat> That's the rumor. Yeah. So isn't that interesting? And I, I find that in sports, every once in a while, sports teams goes back to their old uniforms, uniforms and everything yeah, the like throwback. that. throwback. I yeah. love that. Yeah. You know, hockey was doing it with the original <clears throat> six teams that they played each other. They were wearing the old 1930s jerseys. Yeah, so I, like I wonder, wonder if we'll see some throwback. Uh, we wouldn't want to see it all the time, but occasionally. Yeah. Nice. Aroa had two main, major changes. One, they went from 10-count boxes to 20-count boxes, and their 10-count boxes were the removable top lids, and they went to hinge lids, 20-count boxes for a wider profile, and their CLE changed dramatically from hinge top boxes to slide top boxes. Yeah. No, I, I think they start looking at visibility on shelf spaces and things like that, what works. You know, so it's going to be interesting on the Lagiana when it comes out because it's something very, very different that's never been done before is in packaging that I never saw. I assume that the retailer is going to show it properly. The only thing that goes wrong is if they don't. And then something has to be figured to say, okay, they didn't, they, because it's not hinged, it comes apart and then goes back together. If they don't get it, then that's when you got to go to hinge and say, okay, I got to make it so they can't do it wrong. Right. Right. Idiot proof it and connect a hinge to the thing. But this, this will be interesting. Um, LFD, which used to be a flower on the La Flor Dominicana, that's mm -hmm. what it means. They went from La Flor Dominicana to LFD. Mm -hmm. Actually, most people don't even call La Flor Dominicana La Flor mm -hmm. Dominicana. Correct. It's LFD because it says it, and it's KFC, right? Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> they, they said um, fried was a negative word, so we're going to call Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC now. We're still going to fry it, but we're just going to call it KFC, and uh, people will think differently of it. I think I know where I'm going for lunch after the show. There we go. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. Mickey D's? <laughs> Pops. Uh, there we go. And um, Hammer and Sickle, you're going to see a major change in Hammer and Sickle this year where it was glass and marble and all that. Yeah, we got the Hammer and Sickle Tradition in on Friday. So, oh, you did? Yeah, so the two guys, okay. com has the new pictures of the new boxes. Oh, good. And uh, they'll start filtering out their stores um, soon. First right. time in the company's history they're going with wood. That's right. Yeah. Um, and the worst of all packaging change, the worst in the world, is New Zealand. Yes. No branding, no nothing. Everything's what's called Cool Gray 2C, which is a very drab olive. It's better than 2B. It I'll has, tell you that right now. It has a Lucidia Sans font, size number 10, every box. And every box has some graphic picture to try to convince you not to smoke. And that's the box logo on every single box in New Zealand. Oh, that's not only insane. Yeah. That's it's a sign. It's, it's ridiculous. So that's what to look forward to. Uh, and if they have their way, believe me, we're going to hear about that uh, mm -hmm. coming soon at a cigar shop near you. Right now it's time to hear the Don Raphael offer of the day brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? One million dollars. I'm interested. Eat your pet. Yes. Your living pet. Yes. You're going to eat him. Eat it. I don't know. Like, my next kitten, I told my wife I want to name it Kung Pao because then it'll be Kung Pao Kitten. <laughs> Maybe. Because you don't have it yet. I don't have it yet. Yeah. Do but, you have any pet? Nothing? Uh, I have a cat. Who's okay? You well, he's well past his prime. He's going to be a little bit tough. So a million dollars, you're going to eat him. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. I hope my wife isn't listening. You eat your pet. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure all the rumors we've eaten something. You got to eat the whole thing. The whole thing, not the fur, but no, nah, you know, maybe a rib. Not the whole thing. Not the bones, but you got to eat the meat. I'm in. A, I'm in million for a, dollars. I'm in for a portion. Not the, I can't believe I ate the whole thing moment. Ed Sullivan, you're eating your, you're eating your, well, your doggy. I don't have to eat the whole, I mean, he's a hundred pound dog. Yeah. Right? You can so eat. Barry can eat a little scrawny, almost dead cat for a million. Yeah. Let's say you got to eat a full pound. pound. You got to eat a full pound. I mean, I'm not so, sure my dog has a pound of meat on him, but I'm, I'm still doing it. I could make it into meatballs. <laughs> you could. Yeah, I'm out. L little You're out, <laughs> out. Break out the wok, a little stir fry action. Sure, why not? It's sad, man. You need a pet <laughs> for a million. 
but okay. I would have done it for 10000 Hell, if we were on a plane and we crashed, you guys would be filleting me before I died. Guys, I can still feel this. Shut every, up, Barry. Every time I fly, I bring Snickers bars so I don't have to eat the other passengers. Here we go. But you got to worry about them eating you, so well, you got to bring yeah. enough for other people. <laughs> yeah, you're a Snickers bar guy to travel with? Oh, I think it's good, yeah. Because it satisfies. It does. That's what it the commercial says. satisfies that hunger. That's what it says. <coughs> okay, um, well, let's do it. Let's do it. We haven't gone over, over in a while. All right, let's go to the Classic 3-Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. Epic Rap Battle of the But now it's time for the Epic Battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. It is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under three dollars per cigar you like that baby let him know where i came from yeah choose any blend including the classic connecticut for its mild and smooth taste the classic maduro for its bold and spicy flavor or the classic cuban for its sweet sun-grown and nutty overtones that's undertones you idiot whichever classic you choose it's a classic cigar available at twoguyscigars.com that's twoguyscigars.com celebrate today with a classic cigar. Fowl's in the house. He always shows up when the show's over. Yeah, because it's... Yeah, I wouldn't exactly. want to be here for two hours either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only have four today, so that's good, because we're running out of time. So one and two, three tiebreakers? <laughs> as, as, I, <laughs> as I recall, Ed Sullivan kicked butt. That's was, the way I remember That's yeah. the way I remember it, too. It wasn't even funny. Today it's February 9th, Ed Sullivan. Joe Pesci is an actor known for portraying tough, violent characters... Best known for his role as Vincent Gambini in My Cousin Vinny, Harry Lyme in Home Alone and Home Alone 2, and uh, as in Leo Getz in Lethal Weapon. Co-starred Robert De Niro in Raging Bull, Goodfellas in Casino. Uh, and let's not forget in the Rodney Dangerfield film Easy Money. Joe Pecci, born today, what year? 1947. 47, he says. 44. 44. 51. 51. Everybody is over. Really? Everybody's over. 1943. Close, but no I cigar. I was off by one. Yes, you were. And it's now it's your turn. Madonna's album, Like a Virgin, goes number one for three weeks, and it starts today. What year? Like a Virgin. I'm going to wait for Barron's to lock okay. in his... Lock down. 1981. 81, he says. 82. 82. I also had 81. 81 is not enough. 82 will take the point. It was 85. 85, the year I opened the store. 85. But Mr. Jonathan gets the point. He's leading one to nothing to nothing. I got the uh, point. Barry gets it. Oh, that, Barry gets, gets it. Oh. Um, and there's only two questions left. So it mm. goes to Barry. The Beatles make their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show, performing before a record-busting audience of 73 million viewers across the USA today. What year? 61. 61. 1964. 1955. 55. For two points. Two points. Ed Sullivan, Damn two it. points. How was Ed Sullivan going to get that wrong? It was on the Ed Sullivan Show. I remember that day clearly. Yes. It was a really big shoe. It was a really big shoe. Ed Sullivan is two. Barry is one. Mr. Jonathan is a goose egg. There's one question left. And still heavyweight champion of the world. It's over to who? Mr. Jonathan? Yes. Yeah, I'll take it. The Winter Olympics opening ceremony is performed in Pyeongchang County in South Korea today. What year? Winter Olympics opening ceremony in Pyeongchang County of South Korea. I'm so excited. I actually think I said it right. 1980. 1980, says. 2002. 2002. 1984. Wow, you guys, you got to be kidding me. It was last year. Well, it was <laughs> 2018. I, I don't watch the Olympics, you might have guessed. But it's all right. Ed Sullivan gets the win. <laughs> well, I tied him up. I had 2002. It was the closest. Two uh, to two. I don't remember that. 
2002 gets the point. You did tie. You tie, but he's still, still out champ. champion. Still a champ. Trying to wow, rob. I'm like, it. nobody knew that that's... No one gives a shit. <laughs> it's the Olympics. Well, do you care about La Gianna Corona? What's the that one's mine. Oh, ooh, he does care. <laughs> Almost. Walk away, Rene. Ah, went out. God. Oh, Dave, one thing before we yeah. wrap. Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? It's so freaking good. Why you you There's no reason to play that. Dave, Dave knows why I'm playing that. That's right. Catch the stack authority. Because we ate pop tarts, pop tarts, Boy, pop, tarts pop tarts, pop tarts, and pop tarts. Yep. And remember, operators are standing by for Das <laughs> Hombre Ashtray. Here we go. Who, what's his name? Tony? Or Evan. 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 Poor Evan. He, he wants us to advertise it. I don't think he does. I think, no? he, I think he took time out of his busy day to Too write to us to say he doesn't want to hear. Too much commercial uh, content. Half an hour of commercial. For a bundle brand, and you make a good point. After nine years, I think you've been, you're well. You're entitled. The other point is, I, I listen to probably thirty or forty different podcasts, right? Yeah. And sometimes they talk about something I'm not interested in, and guess what? You can stop. Yeah. Just delete that one and try well, he again was, next He was probably time. saying after five minutes, oh, they're going to stop this and move on <laughs> to the next subject. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep going. Well, it is scheduled for an hour. Uh, right. Correct, correct. And sometimes, how can you talk about a... I remember planning the show and saying, okay, we're going to do this for two hours. How can we talk about a cigar brand for two hours? And we said we can't, so we're going to have to throw some nonsense in. And yet we're running over. Well, right. yeah, speaking of nonsense, he tuned in for the nonsense, I want to get, I want to get uh, one more uh, in here because right. it has a show idea. Uh, oh, good. Stephen writes can through the Contact Us page. Stephen Wright? Stephen writes. Ah. So my favorite TV show of all time is MASH. Upon learning that Alan Alda has recently joined the podcasting game, I decided to give it a listen. He's wonderful, and his show is clear and vivid, and it's all about communication. Now, I know Hawkeye smokes cigars on the show, but I do not know if Alan does in real life. But I think it would be an interesting cross between shows to have him as an interview. Will it ever happen? Heck no. It's a dream show. But maybe you could come up with a list of dream interviews and make a show about that. I don't, uh, I don't know that the thought crossed my mind, so I needed to send it to you guys. Signed, Stephen. Why would it never happen? I don't yeah. think that's a long shot. Alan Alda he's kind of past his prime. I think I, would I like actually thought he was dead. <laughs> but if he's not, <laughs> why could we not get him? All right, I'll give that to you. I'd, I'd like to have Bridget the Midget on the show. So you can try to Bridget land him. Bridget the Midget. Midget. Okay. Porn star. Oh, really? Yeah, in my browser history. Yeah. Pete will be here for that episode. you got to think for <laughs> little people. Oh, my God. <sighs> They're sick, and folks. on that note, keep They're the end out of your mouth. Yeah. And operators are standing by. Cigar pairings to the obscure next week. We're going to uh, – we talk movies now. How about food, drink, and some obscure stuff uh, like the prostate exam? We're going to talk about that and lots more. So get some crazy stuff, things in your, in your bank. And we won't bring up the Dos Ombre until next week. The ashtray runs out on Monday. Monday. <laughs> TwoGuysCigars.com, <laughs> comment Ombre. <laughs> and send, oh. a, send a little note to Pete. He likes it. Yeah. You've been, until then, you've been listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Just keep the lid end out of your mouth. Expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.